Welcome to another video in the 23 part series collection 23 Michael Jordan videos in 23 days. Today we're looking at the day that Jeff Van Gundy called MJ a con man. Now you've probably heard this story, but I don't think you've heard it with NBA legends that were involved on this day talking about it together. We have players like Patrick Ewing, Michael Jordan, the man himself, Van Gundy, Alan Houston, Larry Johnson. Every NBA legend that was involved in this day that talks about it is involved in this video too. So if you're ready for the video, help me out by hitting that like button. Let's aim for 3,000 likes. Subscribe if you are new and are ready for MJ videos coming to you every day in December. And without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy the video. And here's the day that Jeff Van Gundy called Michael Jordan a con man. Let me read from that chapter. I actually had that page pulled. Here's a quote. One of you is going to step up, knock Michael Jordan on the floor, and not help him up. We can't show him deference just because who he is or how good he is. Not anymore. You can achieve whatever you want in life, but no one, especially Michael Jordan, is going to give it to you. You have to take it. Michael isn't just going to play poorly. You have to force him to play that way. Close quote. That's from Pat Riley. So how did he get the rest of the Knicks to buy into the toughness that he felt was necessary to compete at that level? He even had my friend Charles Oakley saying, we can't go to lunch, we can't go to dinner because... Pat doesn't believe in fraternizing between the two of us. And this guy hit me harder than anybody else in the league, and he was my best friend. Patrick, you and we had the same agent. We came out the same time, but we couldn't go to lunch. Why is this? You think I'm going to play against Patrick any different than I play against anybody else? No. And then you had your little guy who was on your staff who became the Knicks coach after you, Jeff Van Gundy. <laughs> Any regrets about the comments made? Uh, Someone in jest about Michael Jordan? Uh, it seemed like he kind of took the uh, heat and lit up 51 points tonight. Any regrets? What's that now? I couldn't hear you. regret saying some of the things about the course of the week about Michael Jordan. I didn't say anything this week about it. His way is to befriend them, to soften them up, make them feel like he cares about them, and then he goes out there and physically tries to destroy them. I don't go on the court expecting, you know, to, to make friends. You know, uh, I go out there to play the game of basketball like I know how to play. Michael Jordan is always on the lookout for extra motivation. Today, Michael returns to Broadway. Now it's time for the New York players to do the talking. The whole thing with Jeff, with Jeff is you got the tension, you got their history, you got the physicality. At the time, the Knicks and the Bulls were big rivals, and I didn't have time to think about and appreciate that you're playing against, you know, probably the best player to ever play. Michael Jordan had some of his biggest games, and Allen Houston uh, had problems. Yeah, last year, Michael Jordan had his season high against Allen Houston. He's a leader, he is, he's, he's a self-motivator, and he tried to motivate his team. Unfortunately, you know, Mike, Mike became Mike, so. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, I hate to admit that, but you know, that, that happened. I talked to Phil before the game, and he said, Mike might get 45 or 50 tonight. How come he predicted that? Michael upset that Van Gundy had said that Jordan uses friendships and stature uh, to con some of his opponents. We talked about this earlier with Michael and asked, is this still ongoing in terms of the unhappiness about those statements? It's never forgotten. I think, uh, you know, when you hear certain things like that, uh, you, you put them in your memory bank and you use them whenever you feel you had the need to. And, um, you know, I, so I hadn't really forgotten it. It rubbed me the wrong way then. and. If I hear it now, it's still rubbing me the wrong way because that, that was never my intent. I was good friends with Oak. I was good friends with Patrick. I get along with everybody, but at the same time, when the light comes on, I'm as competitive as anybody you know. I felt like that was inappropriate for him to say something like that. No, I don't have any regrets. I told the truth. And he had a big night. Van Gundy had said that Jordan uses friendships and stature uh, to con some of his opponents. He cons him by inviting him to his movies. He cons him with the commercials. Uh, he pretends to enjoy guys uh, and, and like them and befriend them. I don't think he gets it. I think for some reason he's so good and has done it for so long that there is this 
you know, and such a mystique about him that and everybody wants to be like him, you know, be as good as he is, uh, make as much money as he is, be able to do all the off-the-court things that you watch him game in and game out. He saddles up next to guys, he smiles at him, pats him on the ass, and then, you know, goes out there and kicks their ass, and they, you know, and they hug him after the game. Like, that was some great thing that he got 45 on them, so I, I don't understand it. Ewing and Longley tip it off. Chicago in losing to Houston on Sunday shot less than 40 percent. Jordan gets his first of the night. That's three turnovers for New York in their last five possessions. Here's Jordan. It's for the Chicago Bulls to get their first lead of the night now. Ewing knocks it right back into the hands of Mr. Jordan. Talk about bad breaks. Patrick Ewing deflects the ball. It goes back to that man wide open to the basket. Five turnovers in the last. Jordan now Larry Johnson with the switch. I tell you, he's feeling it. You can see his face. He expects to be back Sunday at home against Miami. Here's Jordan posting up again. Finds Jordan. Jordan for the Bulls. Giles back on Jordan. Jordan has 34. With Randy Brown, he got the start tonight. Here's Jordan. Nobody there to guard him. Here's uh, Andy went to Patrick Ewing with Bill Winnington on him. Double team Patrick Ewing, so they're good guys who can get threes. The problem is you got to throw it in the post run. Yeah. Great play by Michael Jordan. Great play. Randy Brown kicks it out to Jordan for three. Here comes Jordan. Johnson picks him up defensively. Michael goes for 41. And he knew it was in right when it left his hand. And, and that's hurt the team, and that one was the big one. Jordan. Shooter's roll. A Jordan roll. Yeah, he has a lot of good rolls. Michael Jordan ends a 17-2 run. He's got 45, but it's a four-point game. Now, it'll be interesting. I think Jeff Van Gundy may call that timeout because he said the last six minutes of the game, they don't want Michael Jordan taking shots. Michael Jordan made that shot. He called an immediate timeout. He wants him to get into a good play, obviously, but he also wants more help than Michael. From this point on, he wants somebody else other than Michael to beat the Knicks. Allen Houston guards him. Michael, three moves, and a basket. And this time he glances at you. Yeah, he should. He should glance at all of us. <laughs> he, we call that being put in a blender. Fourth quarter, 1-10 to go. Jordan in the post over Houston. Oh. <laughs> Golly. And they said he wasn't going to get the shots. Jordan with 49. Jordan now has 51. And he is screaming at Jeff Van Gundy. And he's still, and he's, he was not going to pass that ball. He had every intention to shoot it. Guys in the Bulls are running around. He never even looked. Phil Jackson told Dick Versace before the game in the locker room that Michael Jordan was upset with some comments Van Gundy had made because Jeff Van Gundy had said Jordan, with his friendships with other players around the league, lulls them into a false feeling of friendship and then strikes like a viper. Well, uh, well, he's a snake right now, I'll tell you that. <laughs> 18 of 30, including in the fourth quarter. You ready for this? 12 of 14. Not surprisingly, Michael would burn the Knicks all game long. 18 points in the first quarter for Michael. Mike with 27 in the first half. An NBA season high, 51 points, left Van Gundy and the Knicks speechless. Gundy has a Jordan headache right now. Did you take it personally when Van Gundy called you a con man? Yes. You had some words for him. What did you say and were you aware of his comments? I, I wouldn't want to say what I said on, on TV. What did you say to him after that last basket? Some choice words. <laughs> Can you give us a clean version? No. Yeah, I noticed on the last basket you took a hard look at the Nick bench. I did. <laughs> I think you said, um, no. Calm down, you little hockey puck, or something like that. I'm not sure. It was something to that effect. He said, I conned the players, I befriended them, and then I attacked them on the basketball court. 
Where did that come from? He'd read the paper and saw the comments was in the paper. And what did he say to you guys after the game? Uh, no, he was just mentioning that he'd read the thing and talking about how Van Gundy said he was a con man and and using his friendships on the court to to take advantage of other players on other teams. And, and but Michael likes that. He likes challenges. He likes guys to get on it because it forces him and makes him and drives him to be a better player. You know, I was aware of his comments and. You know, when I'm on the basketball court, I compete. You know, when I step off the basketball court, I leave everything that, that happened on the basketball court on the basketball court. I respect every player in this league, and yeah, I have friends in this league, and uh, I don't ask them, and I hope they don't change their, their, their approach to me on the basketball court, because certainly I don't change my approach to them. I was able to make some big shots. Everybody knew the ball was coming to him, and you, you knew you had to stop him. So right. you gotta give him credit. When Jordan scores all the points, usually the other guys will look around and uh, watch him. Michael's going to get his, but we just have to limit the other people. Um, but we just didn't quite do a good enough job. There's nothing to say. He's he's one of the best players to ever play this game. He's the best player to play in my era. I already know how great Michael was. So what, what you were thinking about what he said before what, the game, before the game started? I heard it, and uh, it had some sense of extra motivation. But, Which is you know, it didn't really, it didn't, it didn't go too deep, you yeah. know, because I'm, I'm a a little bit bigger than that, and quite naturally, I didn't want his mind game to play with me. I was good friends with Oak. I was good friends with Patrick. But I'm not trying to con them to play a different style of play against me. My game was the same. You come in the paint, Mike, no. Your jersey, jersey's opposite color come, I got to step up. And that's my <laughs> job, take charge of it. And, you know, defense. And my defense, I was the anchor in New York, and uh, we had a real good defense. So I was in the top five and everything. Uh, so Michael worked on his jump shot once I got traded because he knew that <laughs> he, he had to pull up. <laughs> he had to pull up. So in his book, yeah, he talked a lot of trash about, yeah, I was born at the wrong time, but yeah, you know, hey, he knew if he came down that lane, he was going to have to pay a toll. I mean, that to me is like attacking my basketball skills as a sense of saying, only way you win is you, you make these guys think that you like them. No, I actually do like them. It's a business. Mike want to win, I want to win. So at the end of the day, shake your hand, go step ways. Oakley almost tried to take my head off every time we played. And then we go to dinner afterwards. Right. You know, he played me no different than if he was playing me if I did go to dinner or I didn't go to dinner. I had to do the same thing. Play defense, call to Miller, and let him know that it's still, you can't come down the lane. I'm still here. You know, for me, I was pissed. And here's Michael Jordan. Giles picks him up. Because if he gets hot, there's nothing I can do. Look at this. Michael Jordan is just bigger. He's stronger. He can jump higher. And on the post, Chris Childs needs help. But the Bulls don't like giving help. So he's probably going to be down there by himself most of the night. Because he's 6'6 six, six, and he gets down to 13 feet, you know, I can push him out to 15, 16, then I have the advantage. And so I said, Jeff, let me start on Mike. No John has him. I'm like, okay. So Mike had 35 in the first half. That's why Chris Childs is on Michael Jordan. So Jeff's like, all right, Chris, you got him. I was like, bullshit. <laughs> I do not. So he's like, yeah, you I told okay. you. <laughs> so I went out there. I fouled him five straight times. I was like, you're not going to have 55 on me. And I went and sat down because once he gets going, there's nothing you can do. There was really nothing you could do. You know, we wanted to, to uh, not let Jordan take shots, but we just didn't want everybody else to uh, to get off and, and let there be a lot of balance in their scoring. So Michael knew kind of what areas he wanted to go to. So when you were defending him, he would kind of set you up one way and get to one spot and just elevate. And there was really nothing you could do because he got off the ground so quick. And then we, when, he, when he was able to shoot the ball better and better every year, it just made it that much more difficult. That's when you become really, really good as an individual and as a team, and that's what he was very good at. He's the only one that I can remember that was able to score that many points against us. You know, so it was, you know, they, you give homage to MJ. Listen, I'm, I'm a guy who challenged Jordan, called him a con man, right? I remember so, it like it was I'm, yesterday, yeah. <laughs> Jordan jawing with Jeff Van Gundy and Don Chaney on the bench. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm speaking from experience. Like, you know, in my mind, in, in a one-game setting, if I had first pick all time, there's no doubt who I'm taking, and it's Michael Jordan. And I hope you guys enjoyed the second video on the 23 part series collection of Michael Jordan. If you did, please help me out by hitting that like button, subscribe if you are new, hit that notification button, and here are two new MJ videos that I think you may enjoy as well. And I will catch you guys tomorrow in the next one. Peace.